Look around. Which way? Look to the south, in front of you, behind you. None of what you see looked like this before. All these roads, buildings, bridges, monuments, none of them were here before. Where you stand and in all other directions, it used to be the sea. So there must have been a lot of construction work. Yes, to create land at the former mouth of the river, the delta, required a lot of civil work in the city itself and its surroundings. There were many quarries from which material was taken and brought by barges to this place. As usual, behind every major infrastructure venture is some great initiator. In this case, it was the Habsburg monarchy. Being the continental empire by then, the monarchy began to see how lucrative overseas trade could be to the treasury. Logically, but why here? Why right then? Well, the northern Adriatic area has a very interesting geostrategic position. If you look at the map of Europe, or the world, you will see that this is the shortest route from the Mediterranean to Central Europe, that is, to the heart of the former monarchy. Thus, in 1719, Emperor Charles VI developed a policy of maritime orientation. However, it lacked ports and the entire accompanying infrastructure. The Adriatic littoral was then an empty and peripheral space, only with small towns on steep terrain, days away from Vienna, the center of the state. So this not-so-big river that flows here is the reason for the port's existence, actually for the existence of a new city? Exactly. What you are looking at now is a new through dug up in the mid-19th century, after one major flood hit the city. What you see now almost happened somewhere else. One could say that the growth of this city is a result of someone's political decision. That is a favor that almost flirts with coincidence. Namely, when choosing where the port would be built, several locations were considered. Along with Trieste, a place for another port was to be found. The port almost happened in near nearby towns, Kraljevica or Bakar. Each location had its own reason. Bakar was naturally sheltered, Kraljevica was accessible and Rijeka, well, the reason for choosing Rijeka are contained in the name of the city. Rijeka, with its only constant flow in the northern Adriatic, or Riecina, offered plenty of drinking water, and water, as we know, is a source of life. Where did the ships birth? Today's dead canal, Mrtvi Canal, is the site of Rijeka's first port, but it also was the original Riecina river bed. The place deepest drawn into the mainland was where the transshipment of goods happened. What did it look like? Imagine the great wooden ships berthed in this place, moored by these stone bollards, and imagine the sailors loading and unloading goods on their ships with their bare hands and simple cranes. Which cargo was handled here? Most of all grain and wood were loaded, but also other goods that, for export, were brought on horse-drawn carriages across roads, through mountains and hills in the immediate hinterland, but also from the more remote regions of the Pannonian Plain, the area of present-day Slavonia, Hungary, Vojvodina, Romania. From the close hinterland came wood of which in the end the sailing ships were built and which was dried on the delta area, a space bordered by the new riverbed of Riecina on one side and the dead canal, Mrtvi Canal, on the other. Wood was stored here because, if you look upstream, you will see a canyon from which the breeze blows perpetually, which accelerated the drying process of wood. From farther away, grain was brought in, which was used for nutrition. For these purposes, a long, winding and narrow road was built through the mountains of Gorski Kotar, which was named Karolina Road after Emperor Carlo, Charles VI, the one who encouraged the development of the city. Should I go across the delta to the Dead Canal? Go. Pay attention to the bollards I mentioned. Granite blocks along the banks and walk all the way to the sea. Along the way, pay attention to the late Baroque houses next to Fiumara Street. These are the houses of the captains and ship owners who modernized the city. All this representative architecture and organized urbanism witnessed the expansion of the city based precisely on maritime affairs and its port. The port and the sea are responsible for transforming Rijeka from a small, peripheral and sleepy village from the 18th century 
to a city full of ambition and dreams of significance and greatness at the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Forget cars and roads and imagine people who are walking along that space, sailors shouting, mooring and releasing boats, sailors loading and unloading the cargo. The coast then reached today's Yelachi Square, and the closer the walk takes you to the sea, the more you will move into the 19th century. A series of boats moored today in the Dead Canal tells the story of the people who live here. People living at the coast are hard-working people, people tied to the sea, who have been given most of what they have by the sea. Wooden boats are still being repaired on the delta today. It is a maritime tradition firsthand. What is it at the end of the Dead Canal? A kind of green iron bridge? It is a swing bridge built in 1880 that would rotate to let enter the sailing boats into the Dead Canal. However, the era of sailing ships stopped short after that period and they were replaced by steamships. Short time after that, ships were propelled by internal combustion engines. Steel replaces wood and ever larger ships will seek further spatial expansion of the port, which then enters its new phase, where the machine increasingly replaces man.